Hey all, in this video I'm going to uh, explain the mechanism behind my Stargate module. Um, a few of you may have seen this at Brickworld uh, earlier this year and again at Brick Fair. Um, I have been fairly adamant about not revealing in secrets too early, although there have been plenty of good guesses. Uh, one thing I can certainly say for sure is that the uh, there are no holes in the table because I wouldn't want to drill holes in my Lego table to make this contraption work. Um, so let's turn the camera around and I'll start to pull some key components off and we'll see how it all goes together. So the module itself was actually inspired uh, by a theme that was set by uh, Brickwell and Brick Fair this year, which was to the moon and beyond. Um, so I sort of tapped into my uh, certainly love of all things sci-fi. Uh, and tried to and started thinking about spacey things and eventually thought wouldn't be interesting if I could get a Stargate to work. Um, the module itself basically centered around two key parts. One was the ability to get these to get these mirrors here while well, the, the portals working. And the second was surprisingly enough, uh, well surprising to some, was this little mechanism in here. And I'll just turn this on. So I'd seen this mechanism in a video, this kind of these kind of pistons using the little universal joints in here and wanted to use them. And everything else was kind of designed around having having portals uh, and having this mechanism down here. Um, so the module itself starts actually with a brick world ball pump. Um, I mainly picked this because uh, this mechanism needs a lot of height uh, for its first piston lift. Um, and so this, this just gave me something that was uh, basically in standard and would lift as much as I needed to lift. In this case, I'm really only lifting the three balls. Um, so let's actually start to tear the module down. And first right. things first, we'll have a look at the portals themselves. Um, so if I just pull this out here, um, this is the little control box that controls the LED light ring in it. Um, it's controlled by one of these. Um, uh, I, at the, this is just a simple RGB controller uh, in the sense that I can just pick colors oh. if I actually just pick colors like that. Uh, it has an auto mode which I tended to use during public days because it was nice and flashy and, and sort of uh, gave the effect off. Right. So I'll just, uh, just unplug these and we'll take a portal off and we'll have a look at what's inside it. So, just click this out and this out. Right, so there's the wire again. Uh, just loop this over the top. Plug that back in. Got my nice little yellow marks to make sure I plug them in the wrong way. That was my first controller box failed. A uh, bit of a short circuit. All right, so the portals themselves, just like normal mirrors, um, they're actually based on infinity mirrors. Oh, there's a nice, there you go. There's me in a uh, show mirror. Uh, so they're based on the principle of infinity mirror. What I didn't quite know, and uh, in my research, I kind of, I hadn't come off something obvious online, was whether or not you could put two of these back to back. Normally, infinity mirrors are just one sided. Um, as it turns out, you can. Um, so let's uh, let's open this or open this up. Actually, let's turn this on first again, so I can just. So and we'll change the color just to something static. All right, so one of the reasons I want it double-sided was obviously so that no matter which side of the portal you looked, well, which side of the portal you looked at, uh, it basically went off into infinity. And I found that with applying a little bit of a gentle pressure, basically if I got the mirrors into a cone shape, it would exaggerate the effect going off into infinity. Because uh, I really wanted to try and get that Stargate effect as much as possible. So let's uh, let's open this up and we'll have a quick look at what's inside one. Cool. If I can get this open without too much strife. All right. So I'll just unwind that there. There's my Lego outer. Like that. Uh, and here is my Infinity Mirror Inner. And if I just drop that off, there we go. So basically what we have is a couple of parallel LE, uh, surface mount LEDs, full ring round. We have one side of our mirror there, 
um, and the effect really kicks in when you put the second one on and then you get that effect scrolling off to infinity so that's the pull effect and how that works uh, let's uh, let's take a few more pieces off and we'll have a look at how some of the other mechanism works So now we can see the second two key components of the portal mechanism. Um, so there were certainly a lot of guesses around it traveling under the table, and that was close, but that was not quite correct. Um, but what throws a lot of people is the terry cloth here. And you know, I can put my hand here and it's not gonna impede the flow of balls. Actually, let me grab a ball and I will turn the mechanism on. And I'll drop that ball in there. And there it goes, there's a couple popping out the other side. So let's, uh, let's take off one more layer and then we'll really get into what's going on with the mechanism. So here we are, we've stripped it right down. I've actually turned it uh, all the way around. Uh, so this is actually the input over here, and this is the output over here, but this is so we can see the mechanism here and the input here. Uh, what we see we have here on the input um, is these, this kind of big drop and then these curves at the bottom. Now, when I first built this, I used a motor, um, but what I found was the gravity was more than enough. So if I drop this in here, we'll see that it accelerates and it does bounce back. Uh, that's because this end is running a little bit low at the moment, which means this is the low point. Uh, when I run this in production, I always make sure this is just a little bit higher so the ball's all the way down the end. Um, so once the ball rolls down here, basically it's going to, oh, if I can flick that wrong, it's going to roll along here. Uh, and this is all... This is about as low as I can get this mechanism without drilling holes in the table. But definitely didn't drill holes in the table. Uh, it's going to roll along here and then it's come into this kind of spider uh, gear pickup mechanism. Um, so there are a few challenges if If I drop this out and we have a look, it has to pick up balls from zero, basically right on top of these base plates. And has to deliver them um, at the height of the output, which, uh, let me just grab it, which is... Uh, well, it has to be delivered at greater than 10 bricks tall, uh, which is, oh, is, there we go. That's the Egyptian theme output there. So let's turn it on a little bit slow, uh, and we'll have a look at some of what's going on with the mechanism. All right, so I'm going to drop a ball over here on the left. So on the right in this case. And you see it roll in, and then it gets picked up by these two gears. And they're actually timed so that... As it sort of gets to this point here, it comes off the bottom gear and rolls into this top gear. Let's drop another one in. Of course, production, this has, happens a lot faster. So let's turn this on to production speed. And pop a ball in. And you can see it comes out with a real pop. Um, so part of this is just about keeping up with the one ball per second. Or if I drop a whole bunch of balls down here. Occasionally we have bounce backs. And there we go. So that, that is the, that is the lift mechanism on the output side. Um, and as you can see, this is all very low. Um, if we put, if I drop a ball in here, it's a, well, it's, it's a little bit higher. Oh, yeah, if I drop a ball in here, it looks like there's a lot of clearance, but actually when I put the plate on this side, uh, it is just clearing the ball. So this is about as low as I can go and have a ball roll through. So let's have a look at the last key thing that kind of helps this all come together. Uh, so we've had a look at the, uh, the actual drop and the lift mechanism. I uh, had a look at the portals. Um, and finally, let's have a look at the two ends. Um, so part of the whole illusion, and I've certainly had a bit of advice for those that did see the mechanism and kind of had how to make it better. Um, 
I did want to try and keep it fairly small and fairly self-contained. Um, so one of the things I did, uh, because I had that, obviously that bulge in the, the middle, um, but I also wanted to kind of fool people's optical eyes. So even now, when you kind of look at this construction here, it's not immediately obvious that there's a height change from here to here. However, if I slide my hand in here, we can see that there's a good, almost half an inch, good 14 mil of clearance under here. But if I come around here, I can't slide my hand under at all. So if I bring this up so that we can see the side in detail, we can actually see that I've slowly raked this up uh, on both edges. And I come around here, and once again, it slowly rakes up to the middle and back down. Uh, so this was all part of the, the, the visual illusion. Let me, I'll just grab the other end as well. We'll have a look at that one. Um, well, same deal. Get this in the right spot. All right. So I can't get my fingers under there. I can get my fingers under here. Uh, and if we have a look, actually this part actually comes apart. I think I'd planned to separate that. Not that I ever have. When we come here and look at it closely, we can see that it actually sort of slowly creeps up and slowly creeps up. So it's the combination of uh, those three things. We have the, the uh, portal itself, which is kind of flashy and, and the infinity mirrors in it. We have the sort of very low ramp that runs basically exactly flat on the table. Um, it can actually be a lot, lot, lot longer, but the whole module was getting a bit long, so I shortened it just to the two base plates. Um, and we have this little trick here where I sort of rake the plates up. Uh, and they're kind of the three mechanics that go into making the uh, my Stargate pool work. So there we are. That was the teargown of my Stargate pool. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the mechanism uh, and some of the sneaky stuff I did to make it uh, uh, give the realism that the balls were teleporting. Uh, and I hope it inspires you to build some clever modules of your own. Thank you.